Sparkle Squad, this is Monica and I am coming to you with another Potomac Beads tutorial using cute little beads that I got from the May and April boxes. Now this is going to be a bracelet and some earrings, but I am mixing two of the boxes together because I wanted to pull a few of the small beads that I got previously. So I will put the links below to any of the items that I am using as long as they are still available on the website. And those will be my affiliate links. So I do appreciate those of you who are utilizing my links. Thank you so much. This is going to be the first time that I'm going to use a button closure along with my bead stringing wire here. So this will be an interesting take on a bracelet. I've got my little pattern laid out here on my bead board and I'm also going to need some crimp tubes. This is the beautiful blue heart button and that's what I'm going to be using as my closure. When I lay it up here on my board to measure it, it's about a half an inch, probably a little bit more because of the humps at the top of the heart. So I need to make sure that one end of my bead stringing wire has a loop that's large enough for that heart to go through. So I was just kind of playing around here, testing it out where I would need to crimp. And I think it was about a three fourths of an inch or almost right at an inch. The shank is going to have wire on it and then the beads are going to be going this way down the bracelet but when you put the bracelet on obviously you need to have the heart on this end and then that is going to come through the hoop so that you can put the bracelet on as the closure so i want to be sure that this is going to be big enough to pass through i don't want any kind of blockages to that same thing like if you were using a toggle clasp you would have to consider this as well if you're going to cover your wire then you could put your beads on and then test it i did have some of these little golden seed beads here i'm thinking i'm going to put those on right now i'm just kind of testing it as far as without beads so this would be big enough here and let me measure that on my board. Yeah, so that's three fourths of an inch of a loop. I'm gonna put the beads on, these little golden beads that kind of color coordinate with everything, and then try that again and see how big I need to put the loop on. And then based on how I want to do that, beads or no beads, I'll go ahead and do the crimping. Now, if you're not familiar with Potomac beads, I am doing some bead hauls every month and then turning around and doing some tutorials. I have some of my completed jewelry up here still. This right here in the center was the April and I did all of those different necklaces and that wrap bracelet and all of that. I have some earrings and stuff too. I mean, I went kind of crazy with that. I have been receiving the treasure box, which is their best bead box, if that's what you're familiar with. So the best bead box and the best bead box XL changed in 2023. The Best Bead Box is now the Treasure Edition, which is what I receive, and it's kind of a mishmash of beads. Sometimes they might coordinate, and other times they might not. So it's not like it's a, um, a bead kit per se, you know, like a theme. Sometimes it is. But then if you wanted to do the kits, like if you're a bead weaver or uh, you want to work in some sort of a pattern, then you can do their Bead Box XL, which is now called the Kit Edition and do that. I think there's like three or four of the bead kits and I've been enjoying it so far. Potomac Beads has been including these cool tools. I've got tweezers over here. I've had a tape measure. I mean, they've just keep, they keep sending all kinds of neat stuff and I really do appreciate it. So make sure that you check them out. All right, so here are all my little golden seed beads and I do think I'm gonna use these because I like the fact that I can still see the blue color through that golden seed bead. I did 12 inches of wire and I think that's going to be plenty because I usually like to incorporate a few extra inches anyway. But I want to come over here and see if I've got too many seed beads in order to get my little button through because before when I was measuring it without any seed beads it was like it needed to be a three-fourths of an inch. This is almost a full inch here. So, I mean, I might have too many beads because we want the button to be able to fit through there easily, but we don't want it to be so huge to where it's not gonna work going through the loop. You just have to kind of play around with it for the size of a button that you've got. You don't want it to be too tight. You want it to be able to go over the button, but you want it to be able to hold the button as well. So we added the two buttons back on after I took four off. So I should be able to comfortably get it over. And I do. It shouldn't come off. I'm gonna have to feed my little crimp tube on this side over here. 
I'm gonna grab hold of this second little piece of the wire. I've got my wire side by side here, and you know, I like to do that trick where I'm holding on with my thumb. So I'm gonna do that. I don't wanna have the wire crossed over. It just needs to be side by side. And then I'm gonna use my crimping pliers. I just wanna be sure I don't have any gaps here, but you see how I've got, you can see that blue wire running through this gold because it's kind of transparent. So that's kind of cool looking. I need my crimping pliers though in order to crimp. So I don't want to uh, inadvertently break my seed beads here. So I, I need to be careful. I'm gonna go into the back channel of my crimping pliers, give that a squeeze that makes that U shape. And then I'm gonna come over the top into the front channel of my pliers, give that another squeeze. That just closed the sandwich or uh, closed the cup, however you wanna say that, that makes sense to you. Then I also like to come over here with my bent nose pliers and just give that a squeeze to be sure it's nice and tight. And then I've got no gaps in my little beaded loop here. I can still see the uh, blue color peeking out from the beads. That's really cute because it's gonna coordinate very well with the earrings that I'm going to be making. And then the rest of the design here where it's got the blues and the and the golden yellow and all that with the button. So now if I go to put my button through, I should be able to do it. I hope I'm going to be able to. Okay, so now I'm just going to feed on all of my beads and I am going to make a seven and a half inch bracelet. All right, so now I have a pattern on my little bead stringy wire and it's really cute. I think all of those little colors pull together nicely. I did actually make this a little bit too small though for my button, so that's got me panicked just a little bit, but what I can do is actually take the seed beads off and create uh, just a, a loop for the button. I've got just a little bit of a gap over here and I can make a cut down here so that I still have some wire and I take the seed beads off and then I just make that loop for the button on this side and then make a larger loop on this side to be able to go around the button over here. So all is not lost, even though I've got everything strung on there. Ideally, you wanna do is make sure that your loop fits from the get-go. So, because I mean, by cutting this wire, even though I could still go ahead and crimp it on the back end of this button shank, I've already got a crimp over here, so I'd be essentially double crimping. But a tip on that is if you use your little crimp covers, you can cover those little crimps that you do, so it would essentially look like you've got two silver beads on the end. So it's not, you know, earth-shatteringly difficult to get through. But, you know, there you go. You want to be sure that your button goes through. Whenever I was holding it before I crimped it, it went through. And then after I crimped it, I ceased to have enough room. I mean, it's a very tight squeeze. So I'm just going to go here at the bottom where I've got the crimp, and I'm going to cut the wire. The loop that I made is free. And I can still utilize this to then do another crimp with the button. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll make the loop, the CB loop on this end and make sure that the button will go through it. So I have enough room on here. I'm gonna put the crimp on first, the crimp tube rather. I'm gonna put my button shank on. Then I'm gonna come up over and down through the crimp tube. And because I'm gonna be doing a double crimp cover now to hide the the mistake that I made. I'm not gonna worry about pulling it through these beads because this is already actually going through the beads, the first crimp that I did. So it still gives it a little bit more strength on the end of the piece, but at that first crimp. I'm going to pull the slack out, get it pretty close. And I've got enough of a loop here so that it's not too tight. So now I'm gonna get my crimp plier, go in the back portion, give it a squeeze, which makes a U shape. Then I'm gonna come over the top, give it another squeeze, but I'm in the front part of my pliers at that point. And that is going to close the sandwich. I'm going to take my bent nose pliers and close it to where it's a little bit more neat and nicely crimped. And then this time, I'm just gonna cut that wire off right there at that crimp because I don't need it since the other crimp is actually going through those two beads. So just taking it right up to the crimp there cutting that off. I'm gonna get two of the little crimp covers and go ahead and show you what I'm talking about hiding the crimps. I have restrung all the little seed beads on there and then I'm going to take this and make this a little loop just to be sure that it is going to work to go over this button. Okay, so here's the top portion. 
Okay, so I mean, it is. It's looking like it, it will fit. Now, I've not got anything cramped yet, but this is working with me holding it right here at the, the bead end. And when you pull out the slack, will this go? Here's the fat part of the heart. I think it will. I'll end up taking the seed beads off putting on a, a round silver bead because when I crimp this and I put a crimp cover over that crimp, then I'll look like I've got two silver beads on this end, which will mimic what I've got going on over here on this end. Also, I'd forgotten to put my crimp tube on there before I fed the seed beads on before. So, you know, it's good that I caught that. And even people that have been beading as long as I have, we all make mistakes. All right, so now I'm just going to take the wire go down through the crimp tube. I am keeping my thumbnail on that so that my wire doesn't cross as I'm pulling this through. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that through the silver bead. Try to get it through these smaller holes of the little glass pearls. Uh, it's kind of hard to do that because of that coating, so I may just leave it at that silver bead. Yeah, there we go. Again, the only reason why I like to take the tail through there is just to have a little bit of added security. I'm going to pull it through this other little pearl. This is a 49 strand wire, this blue topaz wire that I'm working with. It just depends on the circumference of your wire and the whole size of the beads on the end as to whether this is going to work for you or not. So I'm going to nudge this down with my thumbnail, pull out the slack, nudge it down. And the reason I'm doing that is to be sure that I have enough room. Now, I do have a little bit of gap here. And once I cut this wire off, the beads are going to get pushed down to cover that. So this is a little bit too big of a gap. I don't want to pull this remaining little bit of slack out yet because I'm going to test my loop right now and see if I need to kind of loosen this loop up just a little bit for the button. So put this through. Is it gonna go this time? It should. Okay. So it's gone through there, but now when I crimp my crimp cover here, it's gonna be a little bit tight. So this little gap here that I've got in the bead, I'm gonna actually utilize a little bit more slack in uh, where I'm crimping this so that I've got a little bit more movement here. And there, because there's gonna be a little bit more slack in the loop here, there's gonna be the barest little gap in the seed beads because I don't, I don't have any more of those little golden seed beads. But that's okay because I like seeing the blue wire here and it's not gonna be a huge gap. It'll just give me a little bit more breathing room to get over that and not look bad. I'm gonna keep my thumbnails on the seed beads up here and I'm gonna pull the beadwork down and this crimp down. And you see now the gap is up here so that when I go to crimp the crimp tube, I've got a little bit more breathing room because when you crimp, it's gonna close up a lot of the space anyway. I'm gonna get my crimping pliers. I'm gonna put this in the back channel. I don't want to crimp my seed beads because that would crush them. So I just made a U shape here with the back channel. Now I'm gonna come over to the top in the first channel of my crimping pliers. I might have to get my fingers out of the way. Again, making sure not to crimp the seed beads. Close that, it's just closed the sandwich. Now that has actually cinched the loop together right there. Took my bent nose pliers to give that a further little squeeze. Now I can cut the tail off. I'm gonna come right up to that bead on the back side of my plier, give that a squeeze, that's cut off the tail. And then I'm gonna kinda wiggle that little bit of a tail into that silver bead there and then push those down, we're good to go. Now I'm gonna put a crimp cover over this and that's gonna take up this little bitty space, but also it's got enough room to breathe here. I'm gonna go underneath my crimp and I've got the sandwich side facing up so that I can go with the bent nose pliers on either side, give that a squeeze. Again, I'm not trying to flatten anything, I wanna be gentle. Take the pooch out of the top if it does that. Sometimes if you're working with the smaller crimp covers, you're not gonna have that little pooch, but in case you do, just come over the top gently and give it a squeeze. Biggest thing is you want it to close the gap so that it doesn't, doesn't just fall off your bead stringing wire. See how it looks like we got two silver beads on either side of the button? 
by doing all of that, did that ruin the tension that I had with the seed beads to get my button out? Let's keep fingers crossed. Yay, my button worked. Now, I'm going to put this on. Make sure that it is able to get over this heart button. And it is very cute. And if I want to wear it like that, I can wear it like that and let the heart button be my focal. And if I don't, and I want to wear it around here to where you see the little flowers and everything, that's cool too. This is a really petite bracelet with this huge heart button. So I think I would like to wear it like this. And because I chose to use those seed beads, um, on my loop, it really ties in all of the um, golden flowers here. So I think it looks really nice like this as the focal. And then these are just the complementaries uh, with the beadwork on the bracelet. So very nice. No huge gaps, no loosey gooseys, And I think I really love that button too. Okay, so that is the bracelet. Really cute. I love all the colors together there. And then I'm able to easily take that off. Now I'm going to create some little earrings with these pretty little flower beads here. And then that's going to coordinate with the bracelet. All right, these are the Vintage Morning Glory flowers, the 20 millimeter flowers. And they are super pretty. I like these. Look at that. So what I'm going to do is use the head pins that came in the box, the Potomac bead box. And this is the number on them if you're interested. And I'm just going to... Do some simple earrings here. I'm going to try to make um, a little center for the flower. I'm going to try two. Oh, look how cute that is. Yeah, I think I like that. So I'm just going to take this, just pulling this straight up to make a 90 degree bend. And then I'm just going to create a loop and that's ready to hang on to an ear wire. So for this part of it, I'm just going to need a round nose pliers and I'm going to come up right here just on the top, probably a fourth of an inch of a way down on my plier and then I'm going to make a 90 degree bend. I'm going to reposition my pliers right side up. I'm going to come up, over, and down. Now I'm going to take my pliers out, put it back on the bottom jaw of the plier and then I'm going to pull the wire back towards myself. And then I'm just going to take this little tail and wrap it around the stem until I run out of the wire and I'm gonna have to kind of uh, bypass the flower bead there a little bit and if I have to adjust on my pliers I'll do it but you want to keep the wraps unless you're in for like a, a messy wrap um, a lot of people love to do those and that's fine too it's whatever look you're you prefer I like to try to keep my wraps together. Sorry for the noise, guys. My husband's out there working. There is one little earring with the loop. Now, these are so cute. I'm gonna actually put that on the fancy ear wires that we got, these fancy curved ear wires. Now, these are a little bit close um, as far as trying to actually get them in your ear, so I just pulled that out a little bit. And then there's a gap already. So I want how my earring is going to be front facing. I'm going to go and grab that little gap so that when you wear this earring, it's front facing like this, right? So now I want to just close this gap on this earring so that I don't have that huge gap so that my earring doesn't come out. And then I have a cute little flower with a little stamen that comes out. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Look how cute these flowers are. Oh my gosh. So really sweet little flowers. I love all of the colors in these and I'm definitely keeping these for myself because I just love this. Now I don't particularly care for these types of ear wires because of the closeness. Uh, like when I go to put it in my earlobe, I have fat earlobes. <laughs> And I've always had ear problems, like, ever since I got my ears pierced a million years ago. I almost lost an ear over it. Yes, it was traumatic. <laughs> so, I'm very particular about how something feels in my ear. So, this might not be the, the style for you, although I will have to say, I love the look of it. Because it does look very sleek. And I like that curve right there. I do like that shape. So, I mean, you know, it just probably takes getting used to. There's so many different types of ear wires out there. You have, you know, kidney style and 
fish hook style and lever backs and all these other types of um, ear wires. So pick whatever you like. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it is the flower beads for me. I think those are so cute. And look how pretty that is with my little bracelet there. Those colors just go beautifully with those earrings. I just love how that turned out. Yay, me! Woo! So here are my beautiful little bracelet and earrings that I made using supplies from the May and a little bit from the April Potomac Beads Best Bead Box Treasure Box Editions. And I have done my beautiful pink and blue brand colors. You know, I've, I've got some variation of pinks and blues just about in everything I do. And I, I didn't realize until after I created my logo and everything how prevalent pinks and blues are throughout everything I've ever done. So apparently I've just really loved that color combination. <laughs> I'm especially impressed with the uh, beaded loop here for my little button. The heart button is absolutely gorgeous. This is uh, one of those check glass beads. And I just love being able to incorporate that blue bead stringing wire that is kind of peekabooing through that beautiful gold seed bead there for the end. And it's picking up the colors from the earrings here. That gorgeous blue with some of that gold. And there's a little bit of clear. So there's some silver elements over here that's doing that. I mean, I just, I think that looks so cute. And then of course it's floral. And then there we've got some of those little golden flowers. I think those little flowers were sunset flowers. Is that what they're called? Yeah, sunset flowers, 10 by 10. So again, all of the supplies that I used here in order to create this gorgeous bracelet and earring set here, I will put below. I think that this is super cute. And it happens to be my birthday month and my 31st anniversary. Well, technically it's 26 years and... Let's see, 26 years wedding anniversary, but we've been together for 31 years. So, you know, I just kind of, I lump it all together now because we've been together for so long. But this is going to be my bracelet and earring. So, thank you so much, Potomac Beads, for my wedding anniversary gift and my birthday gift all in one for the month of May. So, let me know below in the comments, have you made a button closure bracelet before? I have one time, or actually, I think I've now done it maybe three times. It's a very cool looking artistic way to end your bracelets, uh, especially if you are into bead weaving and everything, but this was just bead stringing and I was still able to do it. I'm so tickled with this that of course it's in my colors and I'm going to have to just keep it. <laughs> check out potomacbeads.com for their treasure box edition or their kit edition subscriptions or anything else that they have on their website. They've got so many cool things in the ways of tools. Um, they've even got starter kits for beaters. If you have anybody, anybody that you know that is maybe thinking of getting into beading or they're already in beading, you can get them a gift certificate. You can also buy kits in particular for them, including a fancy bead board. I absolutely love mine and I've showed it here before. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and share with any of your jewelry making friends that might be interested in these goodies from Potomac Beads or anyone that might be interested in my little tutorial here for my bracelet or my earrings. I would appreciate you spreading the sparkles to all that you know. If you've not already done so, please subscribe to my channel and as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a sparkle day, y'all. Bye!